Good afternoon and welcome to this virtual press conference following today's video conference of EU agriculture ministers. We will begin with a statement by the German Minister of Food and Agriculture, Julia Klöckner, who chaired the video conference from Berlin today, followed by a statement by EU Commissioner Wojciechowski joining us from Warsaw today. Afterwards, the floor will be open for your questions. And without any further ado, I would now like to give the floor to Minister Klöckner. Frau Ministerin, Sie haben das Wort. Madam Minister, you have the floor. Hello and good day. Well, one minute. Uh, uh, the interpreter points out that we're missing major chunks of sound. Uh, there was an echo. Thank you. A warm welcome from Berlin. Today we started at 10 o'clock and our meeting finished about uh, 20 minutes ago. And uh, we were able to have uh, an informational Agricultural Council of Ministers meeting. Uh, we were video participants. On the one hand, I think it's unfortunate because decisions and the decision-making process is much better when you can see people face to face, but uh, that wasn't possible. But it nonetheless was a very intensive day and a wealth of information was exchanged Quite a number of uh, political statements uh, of importance were made by the Commission and others, and I'd like to report on you the following. First of all, talking about the EU forest strategy, then COVID, and uh, uh, particularly when it comes uh, to the mink, and also uh, the uh, waste of food and food losses. Uh, and then there was a lot of talk uh, about uh, uh, the uh, summit of the UN on the food systems, uh, and then we talked about the market situation in Europe, uh, both when, when it comes to meat such as beef and uh, pig meat uh, and other sectors. And I also report on a number of uh, common statements uh, that uh, we had together with uh, 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 Vice President uh, Timmerman on his assessment uh, of the conclusions of the Agricultural Council. I will address that, but none of it in depth. I'm pleased uh, that we have Commissioner Janusz Wojciechowski with us, and he can answer your questions. Uh, on the EU forest strategy, we managed quite well to have a discussion because uh, we've set another objective uh, for the EU presidency in office. Uh, we want to have a general forest uh, strategy and a set of conclusions to be produced. Uh, we managed to do that, uh, and the main points uh, of uh, uh, forestry, it's important for all 27 member states uh, to strike a wise balance between the environment and uh, the econo economy, and social issues as well. It's a matter of the strategy that needs to be put on the table and uh, the cross-cutting way of addressing uh, forestry issues, whether it comes to the air, water, filters, CO2, storage, uh, uh, the flora and fauna, building a habitat, uh, uh, casting shadows, uh, storing water, covering a number of aspects, and therefore in many uh, strategies we're uh, addressing all of these sectors and they all need uh, to dovetail. Another important, we were able to address uh, a sustainable management of forests, uh, not just to leave the forest to fend for themselves, uh, but based on the locality to govern them, to uh, plant plants uh, that are climate resilient because of course in the south uh, you have a quite a different forest compared uh, to the north uh, where you have more fir trees and therefore national measures are called for. EU decisions uh, should not be undone, but you can add to them usefully nationally. And then the forest of governance, we need to be mindful of uh, those who gain uh, a revenue from the forest, but it must be done when it comes to well sustainability, also CO2 and a building with wood, uh, uh, wood construction plays an important role. Uh, we don't have a European forest. Uh, we have many different, uh, but in the conclusions uh, that we have submitted today, we truly have successfully managed uh, to make that clear on uh, the common governance that we want to aim for. In Germany, I would point out that 
We have the biggest reforestation program in the history of Germany now. Starting to get underway, 1.5 billion euros uh, will be used uh, in order uh, to relieve the stress on uh, the green lungs that are our forests. Uh, also, the Danish delegation uh, reported, uh, uh, you know what the headlines are. As you know, there are five EU member states, Denmark, the Netherlands, Italy, Spain, and Sweden, that have been affected by outbreaks uh, uh, in uh, mink population. And in the Netherlands and uh, mink, we've had reports uh, about uh, transfer uh, from uh, the mink to humans. In Denmark, uh, they reported in a very transparent fashion on what measures uh, they were to be taking and have been taking. And research plays an important role, but also mutual exchange of information so that uh, we can take measures to stop any further spread. Then in Germany, the point of the fundamental discussion on keeping mink in the EU in Germany, well, there is no commercial uh, economy. There's no mink farming or uh, mink economy. And uh, from a point of view of animal welfare, we uh, want to make sure that we have a proper future, and we have suggested a, a proper discussion on that in the future. The Commission supported that. Then when it comes to food losses and food waste, the figures are dramatic. Uh, 80 and 7 million tons, 87 million tons of food uh, that could be eaten go to waste on an annual basis, thrown away and that we need to reduce that. In 2016, we had conclusions from the Agricultural Council with the objective saying that by the year 2030, food waste should be reduced by half. We're on the right track to do that. The Commission reported on that, but we're still calling for further measures today. And we've decided that in two years' time, all member states need to report according to the same criteria, using the same yardstick to ensure comparability of how they have progressed in reducing uh, food waste. We need the complete uh, production and supply chains uh, to be included uh, from basic production and processing and also uh, uh, post-household uh, treatment uh, and EU foreign trade, uh, uh, consumers in the households, uh, everybody needs to be covered. Uh, we need to address the need to reduce food waste, which is uh, why we have a national strategy in Germany and uh, other states have had them, and uh, we have to continue working on that. And then briefly, to say something about African swine fever, it's now affected all member states. African swine fever is a major concern for uh, animal husbandry. It's a very clear demonstration of how important it is uh, to differentiate uh, when it comes to an outbreak uh, in wild boars or domestic boars. Most member states have things under control. Uh, uh, African uh, swine fever has not spread. Uh, in Czechia and Poland uh, recently, they asked to place this item on the agenda, also addressing the Commission, we need simplifications in the administration and swifter and easier measures, particularly relating to financial support and sharing the costs of this effort. And uh, we all supported that, uh, and uh, particularly Things can never be made dangerous uh, for humans, uh, but we need a joint concept. And once men made an appeal alongside national activities to ensure that the EU Commission will be negotiating intensively uh, with the uh, third countries on regionalization. What happens then in September of uh, 2021? We have the World UN Summit uh, on Food Systems. We had a guest speaker who switched in. Dr. Agnes Karibata from Rwanda, the former agricultural minister from Rwanda, and uh, she was talking to us from Nairobi. We all recognized uh, that we need to tackle food security together uh, in the next years. And then 
we took a considerable amount of time this afternoon after the lunch break uh, dealing with the agricultural market situation information, particularly following information from the commissioner, uh, Mr. Uh, Wojciechowski, will tell us about that in a moment. Uh, I personally would point out uh, what member states have been doing and how they are being addressed. First of all, the negative consequences for the agricultural markets uh, need to be addressed, uh, particularly with the COVID-19 measures. Uh, but in many countries, uh, they are now in lockdown. The measures look rather different in the way they're phased in and out. Uh, and particularly since hotels and restaurants are shut down, uh, there have been huge uh, interruptions in the supply chains and effects on the market. And then uh, there are market uh, uh, aspects uh, negative consequences, and the consequences of Brexit uh, also were addressed, as well as the effect of uh, other factors of uncertainty uh, when it comes to agriculture and food sector. Member states need to realize that we need uh, to be very mindful of future developments on the agricultural markets and to offer assistance where necessary. We need to activate uh, uh, market and uh, crisis m uh, measures uh, when it comes uh, to uh, pig meat, uh, cheese, uh, wine, and other sectors so that we get a smoothly operating internal market. Uh, and we also need uh, to work internationally uh, in our international trade agreements. There were also calls to extend certain aid measures, uh, uh, particularly when it comes uh, to financial resources. Uh, and then we had another lively debate, uh, an intensive discussion on Mercosur. In fact, it was something that most of the ministers uh, raised. Uh, the points they made were, we don't want to expose our farmers uh, to unfair competition if, on the one hand, we have this Green Deal with the farm-to-fork measures uh, and the New Deal, which uh, will be demonstrably greener and more environmentally friendly, but at the same time, food production will not be made cheaper, particularly on the world market. Uh, and therefore, ultimately, this would lead to greater environmental protection, but a disadvantage in terms of competition. The point was made uh, that non-compliance with uh, many agreements uh, in Mercosur were addressed, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, the respect in Brazil. And uh, if we have different standards, uh, there are shortcomings in respecting the sustainability obligations that have been entered into in the climate agreement as well. For me personally, it was quite clear that finalizing that agreement uh, will require all contractual parties uh, to uh, clean up their act uh, so that uh, they protect uh, the natural rainforests. Uh, there will be different explanations for that. We decided uh, to cast our sights globally to the world uh, agricultural. Our market is one that uh, exports tremendously. The, uh, the general system of preferences, for example, which I mentioned uh, we have these obstacles on the third market uh, with the uh, pig meat sector, and we can see what the consequences are. So we need a balance. We don't want a new protectionism or nationalism measures. Uh, we think, and I personally think, that trade is very important and uh, very, very useful, uh, uh, but it needs uh, to work both ways. And if it's not rules-based, uh, it can lead uh, to uh, a disadvantage of for the farmers. And we need to take a clear stance, which uh, I presented uh, somewhat emotionally today. What I come away with is that when it comes to the uh, Franz Timmermans, the vice president of the EU Commission, based on his statements, uh, said that the 27 member states uh, truly are deeply upset that as the beginning of the trilogue, uh, certain statements were made, Mr. Timmermans announced that the proposal uh, that we might uh, have to withdraw or that it's potentially withdraw, so a threat. And secondly, the statement uh, that in, in the new uh, GATT with the 27 member states, uh, that's all been negotiated, uh, but that this could be a step backwards, uh, a deterioration of the 
biodiversity and environmental and climate protection compared to the status quo. And that is, of course, utter nonsense. We can't have it. And there's a general mood that there are more and more polarized views on this. Uh, and some of the statements were crystal clear. And as agricultural ministers, what we were the most upset with uh, was this attitude that a compromise between 27 member states uh, uh, could be found uh, of different natures. Uh, well, that was a, a powerful statement, and the Commission knows very well Commissioner Wojciechowski, uh, who has supported us. Uh, he's uh, accompanying us on this path and said that we need an agreement at a high level uh, of environmental protection, but we don't want to see that at risk. If uh, this is just a th cast aside uh, and if it's uh, seen as uh, insufficient and quite simply ignored, then the European Parliament, for whom I do not speak, but we are in talks uh, with them, uh, they have been democratically elected, and they have rejected that notion. And particularly as agricultural ministers, uh, this reflects what the re reports have been in our country. So we need a democratic uh, compromise. But to just uh, cast it aside as if uh, no agreement had been reached uh, in the EU, that's neither good nor is it credible for the future uh, to decide with a majority. If a majority is happy with the result, uh, I don't think uh, that uh, democracy has been respected. Uh, trilogues will, of course, uh, continue with a willingness to compromise. We, too, are prepared to compromise, but it was a very intensive discussion. But to state that what has already been agreed uh, uh, would be worse than the status quo when it comes to the environment, uh, the climate, uh, and animal welfare, that is so wrong. We, as agricultural ministers, in fact, uh, made a proposal when it comes to the environment and climate protection uh, tabled by the Commission. We uh, tightened it up even more. There was not a compulsory minimum budget, uh, nor were there compulsory eco-schemes of 20%, uh, um, at least in the current uh, uh, agreement, for each euro, a higher environmental and climate protection level needs to be achieved. Uh, and uh, we wanted a, a change in the system, a systematic change. Uh, and it is wrong to think uh, that we're prepared uh, to just uh, undermine the status quo. Intellectual honesty, I think, uh, should remain intact. Uh, so those are the points I wanted to make. I can tell you uh, it was stated even more clearly in the minister's mouth. Thank you. Thank you very much to Minister Klöckner in Berlin. I would now like to invite Commissioner Wojciechowski in Warsaw to uh, take the floor. Uh, just one little uh, thing. If you join us via Zoom today, there is Polish interpretation also available, um, and here in the room and on the live stream in many more languages as well. So without much further ado, Commissioner Wojciechowski, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. I can use the Polish translation, yes? Okay. Thank you very much. This was a very important council, a very important meeting. I particularly was interested in the agricultural market situation. And uh, in this uh, second wave of the academic, uh, we are facing a very grave situation in terms of health, and uh, that has consequences uh, for the markets, also for the agricultural markets. But the situation is not as dramatic as during the first wave of the crisis. We remember that we had blocked with borders in the first wave. We encountered difficulties uh, in, term, uh, in terms of trade, the trade of produce. We had uh, instituted uh, green lanes, green lane uh, border crossings. We also had some problems with seasonal workers. Uh, now we are not experiencing such dramatic problems. At least uh, the, the scale of the issue is much smaller. It's quite manageable. 
Uh, there are certain market uh, measures that were undertaken by the Commission during uh, the whole period of the pandemic uh, in the beef sector and milk sector we had private storage in the sector of fruit and vegetables we used uh, um, uh, various instruments the instruments uh, did have their effect uh, minister spoke about um, the effectiveness of various instruments uh, several sectors are encountering uh, problems especially the pig meat sector and we had a uh, discussion on uh, ASF, on the African uh, Swine free Fever, uh, Minister Kirakides, for example, was speaking um, uh, about uh, sir, uh, Commissioner Kirakides was speaking about for certain aspects of this and um, uh, of combating ASF. Uh, we should also uh, um, focus on this issue from uh, the economic uh, standpoint. And today, during the Council meeting, uh, I did declare that the Commission uh, will present a uh, um, deep analysis of ASF. We would like to consider uh, what instruments should be used in the future, in our future common agricultural policy in order to limit uh, um, the spread of this threat of ASF, especially uh, uh, we should focus on uh, better uh, securing and protection of uh, farms, of um, uh, pig meat farms, and um, we are experiencing um, a problem here, small holdings are often closing down and we are ex uh, witnessing um, a more concentration in the production uh, of uh, pigs and that's not necessarily positive. We, we should have a more sustainable way uh, to produce pig meat and uh, um, uh, we should um, uh, help uh, uh, smaller uh, farms that could uh, contribute to such sustainability and uh, focusing on animal welfare could be very beneficial here. The Commission would like to increase uh, funds in order to improve animal welfare that could uh, uh, be very fruitful, it could be effective in combating ASF, but also in other sectors, in the beef sector, for example, we would like um, um, to invest or, or to allocate more funds for animal uh, uh, welfare. It was a small portion of the second pillar so far. Um, and, and I think in the uh, next cycle, we should allocate more funds to animal welfare. We will discuss this further, and then we will also um, 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 analyze uh, the consequences of ASF um, on uh, farms, on pig farms. Uh, moving on to uh, the Mercosur uh, agreement, uh, um, soon uh, the, um, uh, the Commission will uh, publish a study on the cumul cumulative effect of all trade agreements um, on the farming sector. I uh, uh, agree with the Commissioner, with Commissioner Klöckner, uh, that we do focus on opening markets because we do have, uh, export uh, foodstuffs. And generally, um, this opening of the market um, has positive uh, results, but we should be sensitive to threats. If certain uh, sectors are threatened, we should take advantage of various instruments uh, at our disposal. Generally, we do believe that uh, trade agreements are positive for EU farming. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I would now like to invite journalists to ask their questions. As per usual, please do raise your blue hand in the Zoom conference and state your name and the media you represent. And please also switch on your camera. Thank you. There's a first question by Arthur Neslin, Politico. Arthur, you have the floor. Thanks very much. 
my question, first of all, Chikowski, um, do you agree with this characterization that the German agriculture minister um, just made um, that Mr. Timmermans was intellectually dishonest and wrong, undemocratic, talking utter nonsense? Do you think that was um, a well chosen description of his behaviour? And for Frau Klockner, do you think that the Commission had to be had the right to withdraw the cap if the, that it was not in line with the Green Deal? Thank you, Arthur. Minister Klockner? Should I reply? Yeah, bitte. Okay, it was a question for me. Well, as to whether or not that is a threat, well, Commissioner Timmermans did make this threat, but the President of the Commission, Dr. von der Leyen, did make it clear in a letter sent to others and, and sent to the Greens, in fact, she wrote a letter indicating that the proposal should be withdrawn because she herself did not have a majority for her position in Parliament, in which case a proposal should be withdrawn. That is not only undemocratic, as I understand it, but in fact no headway would be made. The environment and climate protection would just not get anywhere. Uh, no one has enough time for that. Neither farmers nor other stakeholders come to that, and that's why we got down to this work. The interpreter apologizes, but the sound is being interrupted by another channel, which means that it's only possible to get fragments. But anyway, um, Ms. von der Leyen we, um, um, received rejection of the proposal to, with, to withdraw it, and it was made clear by Commissioner Kiriakides today that she would find it difficult to conceive of the idea that the Commission would withdraw its proposal. Thank you, Minister. Commissioner Wojciechowski. I would also like to refer to what Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the Commission, said that the Commission does not want to withdraw the common agricultural policy. There is no such intention. We should not even consider it. We had the first trilogue with Vice President Timmermans. We went to this trilogue, and I think it was a good start, very positive. Very good uh, uh, feedback from the Council, from the Parliament, that we might have a good agreement at the end of this um, road. Uh, uh, the Green Deal is, is, is our ambition. I, uh, um, as the Minister, as the Commissioner uh, responsible for. Um, Agriculture. We, I would like to uh, reach the goals of the green goal of uh, green um, um, uh, deal. Uh, I know that small holdings, um, medium-sized farms need it. Uh, that that will uh, increase the resilience of uh, um, European uh, farming. Uh, and uh, this uh, intensive agriculture, uh, this respectful of the environment, of the climate, is not good for uh, for farming in the EU in general. And regardless of the trilogue proceedings, uh, the Commission um, is uh, in touch with member states. We have prepared the first version of guidelines for member states. In these guidelines, we have some specific uh, proposals regarding strategic plans. We uh, uh, are encouraging member states to adopt uh, um, ambitious plans also within the framework of the Green Deal. Uh, this is a priority for us. Um, moving on, uh, animal we welfare is also a goal, and uh, it's be, uh, being being um, 
given a high profile, and I'm, uh, I'm happy that uh, the Council is also putting forward uh, uh, um, animal welfare as part of uh, eco-schemes, for example. It is also uh, part of activities that are supported in the second uh, pillar, supported by, by uh, member states. Uh, the Commission um, is on the same page, and we would like this common agricultural policy improve the situation of animal welfare. I think it's very important also to um, um, the European public opinion. Our, our uh, citizens are, are very sensitive to this issue. And I think it's very good for uh, promoting European food, from promoting European agriculture. Uh, this is um, uh, a good choice. This is the right way to go. Um, we should uh, be more mindful of the environment, more mindful of animal welfare. And uh, we, we shouldn't consider withdrawing this, this proposal on a common agricultural policy. Our uh, farmers would like to know. They would like this package to be finalized. They need to plan for the future. So uh, we should finalize it as, uh, as quickly as possible, as smoothly as possible. Uh, remembering uh, our priorities, the EU priorities, uh, the Green Deal is a very important priority in farming. Today I met the uh, new Polish Minister of Agriculture in Poland, and I declared um, uh, in a very clear way to him and, uh, that uh, the Green Deal will be uh, um, implemented. This is a very important priority and it is especially important for small and medium-sized farms, family farms. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Wojciechowski. Uh, there's a next question by Gerardo Fortuna. Um, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Thank you. Yes. Um, it's actually a follow-up on what uh, Arthur just said. Um, so uh, this is a question for Commissioner Wojciechowski. Um, I mean, um, you, you just say that we should not even consider it. The Commission should not even consider the withdrawal. Uh, so it is or it is not an option uh, for the Commission to withdraw, even as a last resort. Because uh, um, it's true that von der Leyen said that she's not considering it, but at the same time, in the, in the letter mentioned by, um, by the minister, by the German minister, um, she said that she uh, shared some uh, thoughts of the Greens, particularly when uh, they referred to certain aspects of both position that appear to her, and I quote uh, von der Leyen's letter, unable to forge a final common agricultural policy that could produce positive results and deliver on the Green Deal objectives. So um, they kind of share these concerns. Um, so again, the, the question for, for Mr. Wojciechowski is, it is or it is not an option? And, uh, and also, if, if he thinks that it's a bit, you know, too crowded in the sense that... I have a clear mandate uh, to finalize uh, this dossier of the common agricultural policy. Um, I work with the parliament. I work with the council. Uh, it's part of my mission statement. Uh, and within the framework of this mandate, I uh, am cooperating with the council. My presence at uh, this council meeting as uh, uh, Minister Kluckner um, rightly said it was useful to to uh, reach a compromise to um, adopt um, a common position, and we I have also cooperated with the Parliament. Uh, I have held talks with the committee, the Agricultural Committee at the Parliament. I think we have a very good basis to conduct a good reform. That's what we are talking about because all kinds of speculation, what could be, what will be, this is not unfounded. No. Our goal is to adopt um, a good reform, a good reform for the future, for our farmers, for food security in Europe, um, 
more de decent income for European farmers and also to reach uh, uh, ambitious uh, uh, environmental climate um, goals and animal welfare goals. So we want to finalize this issue and we are not considering any alternatives. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner, um, I see one more question from Axel Mönch. Axel, you have the floor. Yes, uh, good evening. A question again for Commissioner Wojciechowski about the European pigweed market. Uh, a lot of member states see a rather dramatic situation in the pigweed market, um, and they ask for help, especially the private storage scheme. Could that be why you see not for the, now the right moment to open the PHL? Axel, you were, you were breaking up a little bit. I, I would like to ask the Commissioner whether he understood the question correctly or whether we should repeat. Yes, I did understand the question. The question was about the situation in the pig meat market. I can repeat what I've already said uh, during the Council to all ministers and uh, President Klöckner. We will consider uh, these type of interventions. Many member states uh, mentioned it, and it's a top priority in the pig meat sector. We will consider the possibility and the need for market interventions. Uh, choosing from the instruments that are available, private storage being one of those options. However, first of all, we will uh, carry out an in-depth analysis of the present and the future because we need a more permanent solution. We have um, crises that um, repeat from time to time. That is why we need um, strategy, also a strategy to fight against uh, ASF. We have different strategies applied by different member states. There are also fears and worries about a possible imbalance in the market. So we really need an in-depth analysis. It will be a major task for the Commission and for me personally, because regardless of um, the Commission decisions and the focus of the Commission on health issues, on uh, sanitary issues, I believe that we should also carry out an economic analysis and then undertake uh, maybe short-term measures. And in the longer term, we would probably have um, to think about the future of this industry um, in the framework of strategic plans. Thank you. Wojciechowski. I see no more questions, so thank you to everyone for joining us for this virtual press conference today after the video conference of EU agriculture ministers. Thank you very much to Minister Klöckner in Berlin, Commissioner Wojciechowski in Warsaw, all the journalists, all the technical staff and all the interpreters. Bye-bye. See you next time.